Hello! Congratulations on taking your first step to prepare for the college placement test. My name is Meredith Vicente. I am the Director of Project Assist here at Cumberland County College. My job today is to help prepare you for the reading comprehension part of the AccuPlacer. By the end of today's podcast, you will feel better prepared and ready to take this important test. Here's what to expect. This section of the test measures how well you understand what you read. You will read passages and be asked questions about what you have read. Some of the skills measured are main idea, supporting details, inferences, relationships of sentences within the paragraphs, and author's tone and or attitude. Now I'm going to give you some strategies for success. The first strategy for success is understanding passive versus active reading. Passive reading involves generally reading for pleasure. When you read a magazine, mystery, or romance novel, or a newspaper, you are primarily using passive reading. Passive reading requires little thought or attention. Active reading requires you to ask questions and think about what you have read. For the reading comprehension section of the placement test, you must use active reading. You must be attentive, thoughtful, and purposeful as you read. After you read each and every sentence, you must know what you have just read. If you don't know what you read, then you must read it again. Break the author's words into your own words and dissect each and every thought. Just like a surgeon, to be a good reader, you will need to pay attention to the details. The second strategy for success is keep a positive attitude. Going into the reading section thinking that it is a waste of time or that you don't feel like reading will be a recipe for disaster. Remember, the passages are designed to test your higher level reading skills, so chances are they are not going to be of high level interest. I hear from students all the time that they only like to read things that they are interested in. Well, I am here to tell you that the chances are pretty high that much of what you will, much of what will be on this test and plenty of what you will read in your college classes will not be of high level interest to you. You must accept this, read with an open mind and keep a positive attitude. And remember, there is always something to learn, and you never know when it will benefit you. I once got a question on Jeopardy, right? And believe it or not, I learned the information from a reading passage on the AccuPlacer. Too bad I only got the satisfaction of being right in my own living room and not not on national TV for real money. The third strategy for success is frequent checks for understanding. Remember what I said earlier, you must be like a surgeon? You must dissect each and every word and sentence. After each sentence, be sure that you understood what you just read. Remember, authors often use vocabulary that we don't normally use in our everyday language. They often structure their sentences with some complexity. It is your job to have that make sense to you. Which brings me to the fourth strategy for success. Summarize in your own words. Restate their ideas so they make sense to you. Ask yourself, who or what are they talking about in the sentence? What are they trying to tell you about the who or the what? Use your own words. The fifth strategy involves paying attention to transitional words. These are words like however, but, nevertheless, first, next. They're there for a reason. They indicate that the author is making a new point. They help you make connections between ideas. The sixth strategy has to do with paying attention to the words that the author has chosen. They are using these words for a reason. Remember that words can carry emotional qualities and these words help you understand tone. If I were to tell you I was disappointed in your work, or I was disgusted with your work, which would you prefer? Choosing the word disgust over disappointed would certainly indicate a more angry tone. And last but not least, even after you use all the strategies for success, you will still need to find the right answer choice. How many times have you been left with trying to choose between two answer choices that you feel could both be right? 
And how many times did you choose the wrong one? I know this has happened to me. My solution? Cover up the answer choices. Read the question and formulate an answer in your own mind. Then uncover the answer choices and match it to the one that best matches your own answer. Many times when you read those answer choices first, the answers themselves are confusing. There is always one answer designed to be tricky and confuse you. Don't let that happen to you. Figure out an answer on your own, then read the choices. Main idea. You can safely bet on the fact that you will be asked to find the main idea or author's main point in almost every passage. It makes sense. If you don't understand the author's main point, then you really don't understand what you have read. I have found that this simple question often scares students. Well, have no fear. I am here to make this less scary and give you the tools to nail this question. The first thing you need to do is follow the strategies for success. Remember to read actively. Secondly, after you have actively read the passage, before looking at the questions, ask yourself two questions. Who or what was this passage mainly about? Hint, this subject will have been repeated numerous times in different ways throughout the passage. This is otherwise known as the topic. Then ask yourself, what was the author trying to tell me about the who or the what? Remember, all the sentences will provide details or clues about the topic, which will lead to one overall or general point. Think of yourself as a detective. All the evidence will point to one general conclusion. Another way to think of main idea is as an umbrella. Main idea is not a specific detail. It is the most general, overall idea about the topic. You can also think of main idea as the primary point about the topic, or we could say the umbrella idea. Remember, all other ideas should be able to fit underneath the umbrella. We call these supporting details. Finally, ask yourself, can all the other details fit under this general idea? If not, you do not have the main idea. If you don't think you have the main idea, go back to the drawing board. Remember, main idea is not a specific detail. It is a general point. Let's try this. The physical environment of a classroom is extremely important because it can influence the way teachers and students feel, think, and behave. If a student feels pressured, under stress, unhappy, or unsafe, it would be impossible for her or him to learn the lessons planned by the educator. Likewise, if a teacher feels unhappy or disorganized because of the classroom's lack of order or detail, the ability for her to teach is greatly diminished. The environment of a classroom serves four basic functions, security, social contact, pleasure, and growth. For real learning and teaching to take place, all four of those needs must be met by the class space. Do you see any words or phrases that are repeated and answer the question, who or what is the paragraph about? If you answered the classroom, you are correct. As you can see, highlighted in red, the classroom appears four different times. It answers the question, who or what is this passage about? Now, what did you learn about the classroom? What was the author trying to tell you about the classroom? If you answered that the author was trying to tell you how important the classroom is because it influences both the teacher and the student, you were correct. Let's do a check. Can the other details fit under this umbrella idea? Does detail one tell us how the classroom can influence the way a teacher or student feels, thinks, or behaves? Let's see. If a student feels pressured, under stress, unhappy, or unsafe, it would be impossible for her or him to learn. 
Yes, Detail 1 does tell us how the student feels, thinks, or behaves. Does Detail 2 tell us how the classroom can influence the way a teacher or student feels, thinks, or behaves? Let's check. If the teacher feels unhappy or disorganized because of the classroom's lack of order or detail, the ability for her to teach is greatly diminished. Yes, Detail 2 does tell us how the teacher thinks, feels, or behaves. Does Detail 3 tell us how the classroom can influence the way a teacher or student thinks, feels, or behaves? The environment of a classroom serves four basic functions, security, social contact, pleasure, and growth. For real learning and teaching to take place, all four of those needs must be met by the class space. Yes, this detail makes a conclusion about how the classroom affects many aspects of feeling, thinking, and behaving. How to infer. You may be asked questions which ask you to read between the lines or infer. These types of questions are asking you to understand what the author is saying without actually saying it. If the question contains words such as suggests, implies, infer, then you must use the supporting details to draw a conclusion. The answer will not be directly in the passage. Be a detective, piece together the clues to figure out what the author is saying. Read between the lines. Another strategy is to pay close attention to the vocabulary the author is using. By paying attention to the types of vocabulary that the author is using, it can help you to read between the lines. Let's try this. When Todd's mother asked him to stop playing in the yard and come indoors, he didn't even look up but shouted, No! and then spelled it out, N-O. The author is suggesting that A. Todd didn't hear his mother, B. Todd was in a stubborn mood, or C. Todd was having lots of fun. If you selected answer B, you would be correct. This is the only inference that can be made from the passage. The fact that Todd shouted no and then spelled it out suggests that Todd is being stubborn. Answer C may be possible, but that is not enough information in the passage to support this information. Answer A does not make sense because the sheer fact that Todd responded supports that he did indeed hear his mother. You may be asked what the function of a particular sentence is or what the relationship between two sentences are. Here are some basic tips. If the answer is, the first sentence contradicts the second, this means the second sentence states the opposite of the first. If the answer is, it makes a contrast, this means the second sentence disagrees with the first. If the answer is, the second sentence proposes a solution, this means that the first sentence must state a problem. If the answer is, it gives an example or it illustrates, this means the first sentence makes a general statement and the second sentence kind of paints a picture. It gives a specific example or illustration. If the answer is, it states an effect or cause an effect, look for a cause, a why, in the first sentence, and an effect or consequence or reason in the second. If the answer is, it repeats what is stated in the first, or they repeat the same idea, repetition. This means the second sentence will give the same meaning as the first sentence, but in different words. If the answer is the second sentence provides evidence, look for specific details, data, or statistics in the second. Let's try this. The new dance tune CD has proved to be very popular. It has sold 80,000 copies this year. How are these two sentences related? A. The first sentence explains the meaning of the second. B. The second sentence explains why the CD is popular. C. The second sentence provides evidence of the first. Or D. The first sentence contradicts the second. 
If you chose C, you were correct. There is specific data in the second sentence that supports the idea that the CD was popular. A common incorrect response is answer B. If you turn answer B into a question, does the second sentence explain why the CD is popular? You can see that this is not possible to answer. Therefore, this response is not correct. The fact that it sold 80,000 copies does not tell us why it was popular. Tone or attitude. You may be asked questions regarding the author's tone or purpose. Think about how the author would sound if he or she were speaking. Remember, tone is the author's voice. You need to pay attention to the words and the details. Words can reflect feeling or judgment. Ask yourself, are the words positive, negative, or neutral? This can help you to figure out the tone. Let's try this. Unfortunately, this car is a lot less reliable than I like. The author's tone is A, optimistic, B, angry, or C, disappointed. The correct answer is C. The fact that the author used the word unfortunately indicates that he is disappointed. Here are some final words on improving comprehension. Remember to read actively. State the author's words in your own words. Make sure it makes sense to you. Pay attention to the vocabulary used. When looking for the main idea, remember to look for key repeated words or phrases. Remember that main idea is a general, overall, umbrella idea. All the other ideas must be able to support this general main idea. Congratulations and good luck. I hope that you feel more confident and, dare I say, excited to tackle the reading comprehension section of the AccuPlacer. Good luck and just remember, stay positive.